One AI search is equal to keeping a light bulb on for 20 minutes straight and one AI query is equal to using up half a glass of water. AI has made our lives so convenient, right? When we want to look like a Ghibli character or we want to understand complex subjects in two minutes or we want to confide in someone without being judged or we want to draft emails and elevate our CVs, AI is known to provide solutions in seconds. <laughs> But did you know that one chat GPT search is said to use up nearly 10 times the electricity compared to a Google search? Basically, our convenience, as in using AI for our aid, is coming at a price. Let me explain. In short, artificial intelligence trains and runs on resources such as water and electricity, and so it puts pressure on the environment. To give you context, let me walk you through the process of using an AI chatbot. I enter a prompt into an AI chatbot. The chatbot registers my prompt or query in its database. And this data lives in servers and supercomputers placed in data centers. This is what a supercomputer looks like. So, my prompt travels from my phone or computer to the database and the devices there quickly rummage through all the information relevant to my search and send back an answer to the chatbot. The AI assistant then throws its response at me. And when the devices were processing large amounts of data to bring me one answer, they were also heating up because I'm not the only one looking for answers, right? There are millions like me who are feeding prompts into AI assistants every day. Oh, ChatGPT, I am so sorry to bother you, but could you please complete question one of my assessment, please? Oh, it's no worries. Uh we were just kids when we fell in. All these searches make servers and supercomputers heat up. Think of it like your phone or laptop and how sometimes they heat up when you open too many apps or tabs. To run quick searches, supercomputers need chips called graphics processing units or GPUs, which can process large amounts of information in a short period. According to the United Nations Environment Program, the microchips that power AI need rare earth elements which are often mined in environmentally destructive ways. And to build a single 2kg computer, 800kg of raw material is required according to a digital economy report by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. The buildings or data centers where the servers and supercomputers are placed need cooling systems to avoid overheating. The data centers also produce electronic waste and use a lot of water, which UNEP said is becoming scarce in many places. Water makes up 71% of the Earth's surface but only less than 1% of it is fit for consumption because the rest of it is either salt water, frozen or inaccessible due to being too far under the ground. And the less than 1% of fresh water that we need for human consumption is also used by industries of agriculture and manufacturing. Why do data centers use water? One, to generate electricity and two, as liquid coolant to combat the heat generated by servers and equipment. According to NPR, a mid-sized data center uses 11 lakh liters of water in a day. A few biggies in the tech field have spoken on this. Meta said they're stemming their environmental footprint by matching their energy use with renewable energy, meaning they add new wind and solar projects to local grids, including those where their data centers are located. Pretty excited about this latest update to Meta AI. It basically lets you generate images of yourself in any style and doing anything that you want. On water, Meta said their goal is restoring more water than they consume globally in 2030. Meta AI is on track to reach our goal of becoming the most used AI assistant in the world by the end of the year. Microsoft made a similar pledge in 2020. In 2021, Google announced a water stewardship program aiming to replenish 120% of the freshwater volume they consume. In 2024, the company announced it would comply with stricter environmental needs and revise a data center project in drought-stricken South American country Chile after a local court there temporarily revoked permissions for the project. Statista reported that there are at least 10,332 data centers across the world, with US having the most at more than 5,000. 
There were 3,600 data centers in 2015, and in 10 years, the number has gone up by about 7,000. This would give you an idea of the scale at which data centers are proliferating. A World Economic Forum report said Microsoft's carbon emissions saw a 30% jump since 2020, and Google's carbon emissions saw a 50% jump because of data center expansion. Data centers need a lot of electricity to keep running. One ChatGPT search is said to use up nearly 10 times the electricity compared to a simple Google search. Why is that though? Again, because an AI assistant processes large amounts of information and frames conversational sentences to respond to users. A Google search, on the other hand, just throws up links which the users are required to visit so they can figure out answers to their questions. For example, I asked Grok AI and Google the same question. What's a quick remedy to get rid of a pimple? While Google directed me to these links, Grok AI straight up wrote me a remedy. Now even Google has added an AI overview feature which sums up the search aside from giving links. Bloomberg said the world's data centers could use as much electricity for a year as could power the whole of Italy or Australia. The demand for electricity due to an AI surge is now outstripping the available power supply in many parts of the world, Bloomberg said. According to DW, the carbon dioxide emissions from training a single AI model are more than five times the emissions a car generates in its lifetime. Most of the energy or electricity used for data centers comes from fossil fuels such as coal and gas. Burning these creates carbon emissions and contributes to climate change. A Goldman Sachs report said the carbon dioxide emissions of data centers may more than double between 2022 and 2030. What we're seeing right now is an AI explosion. Tech is evolving. Our parents didn't have search engines to look up stuff in real time. Then we got the internet and Google literally became a verb because of how much we started using it. Posts became emails and traditional phone calls turned to real-time texts and calls. Then AI came into the picture and everyone can send prompts left, right and center. It's become clearer that the next generation of services requires building full general intelligence. Building the best AI assistants, AIs for creators, AIs for businesses and more. That needs advances in every area of AI. And as with anything new, it is not without challenges. A few hundred thousand people die on the roads due to car accidents. And we take that as a given. But if one person is killed by an autonomous car, the provider of that has to go back to the drawing board for two years. In other words, because the bar we have of expectations of machines is at a different level than of human beings, this becomes actually very difficult when you try to adopt at scale. So adopting AI at scale is hard work and will continue to be so. While the conversation around pollution generated by AI is evolving, there's also a parallel conversation about AI helping the environment and combating climate change. For example, Myro's group, a Norwegian oil spill detection system, is using AI to detect oil spills around offshore installations to help find out if the water is contaminated. So we do uh, automatic 24-7 uh, uh, detection that would give the, the operators an alert that there is a probable oil spill taking place and they would need to uh, look into it and take their uh, required action to cope with it. South Korea is using AI-powered bins to identify almost all kinds of plastic bottles available in the country within seconds and sort them out for recycling. Scientists are using AI to track deforestation in real time, track weather patterns and assist with more efficient waste management. Experts think that by 2030, AI might help cut down global emissions by 10%. The key is then to bring a balance between the two poles of AI usage, the pollution it causes and the pollution it helps stem. While energy and water use by AI is a concern as of now, we'll have to wait and see how companies navigate this in the future and whether they're able to mitigate the problem.